I'm Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft or welcome back if you're a regular viewer. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video and it's been really nice to be back on this week on YouTube with two new videos. You might have noticed I had a little bit of a break from um, posting new videos over the summer and my children were off school for some holidays. We were a little bit busy so I decided to have a little break but they're back to school now this week so it's really nice to be back on and I'm ready to film some more videos for the autumn so yeah I'm really excited about that. So yeah, I mentioned I'm putting out two new videos this week. Um, I already posted one earlier in the week which was a sort of chatty sewing catch-up video where I talked about a couple of projects I'm currently working on and I shared one make and a few plans and that sort of thing and I'll link that video up above in case you haven't seen that one. And then this video today is to share with you some of the things that I made over the summer. I didn't get as much sewing time as I often do over the summer, but I did manage to squeeze out a few new makes, um, particularly towards the end of the summer holidays. Once we we're back home um, from being away, I had a little flurry of late sewing. So I'm really looking forward to sharing with you what I've been making. And we've got a bit of a mix. I think I've got five makes to share, a couple of dresses, a blouse, a top and a pair of shorts. So yeah, a bit of a mix and I'm looking forward to chatting those makes through. But I'll start the video off as usual with what I'm wearing today. And we're having really um, proper back to school weather here in the south of England um, after a really warm, sunny summer, which is lovely. The weather's definitely turned a little bit and we've had quite a lot of rain this week. And um, particularly this morning on the school run, there was a real downpour. I still feel a little bit damp now, actually. Um, so yeah, it's been a kind of bit of a change in what I'm choosing to wear from really summery clothes to something a little bit more suitable for this change of weather. It's actually really sunny outside now, so I don't know what the weather's going to do next. But today I am wearing a pair of leggings, which are ready to wear. I haven't ever made a pair of handmade leggings, actually, but I think when my current ready to wear ones wear out, I might look into that. But my dress I'm wearing is handmade and I don't know whether you might recognise it from the top. It's quite an indie classic pattern. It's this one here, the Calais shirt and shirt dress pattern by Closet Core Patterns. I really like this pattern. I love that it's a pattern with loads of different options in and I find it sews up really nicely. I like Closet Core instructions a lot too. And it's also got a really good size range, this shirt and shirt dress pattern. I've got the Paith pattern, which goes from a US zero up to a US size 20. But there's also a PDF version which you can download on Closet Core's website, which is for a size 14 up to a size 32. So yeah, it's a really size inclusive pattern. It's a really nice one. I find it a really casual, comfy one to wear. And there are loads of different versions of the Calais. I'll show you the line drawings. It's quite a boxy, straight fit shirt and shirt dress. And you can make it either as a crop version or a tunic version or a dress version. And then there are loads of different um, variations built in as well as those three different lengths. You can make it with either a simple band collar, which is what I've gone for on my version, or a full collar. Then at the back, <coughs> excuse me, there are two different pleat options, a box pleat and an inverted V pleat. And it's got a yoke too, and I do like the yoke detail on a shirt. Yeah, I think it adds an extra little something. And then at the front, you can do three different um, types of um, button placket too. I've done all three actually. There's a um, concealed version and a popover placket and then a full sort of exposed button placket. So yeah, you can kind of pick and choose different versions. Oh, and it's also got cute little sleeve cuffs too, which I quite like as well. And yeah, it's just a really nice comfy one to wear. And I think um, in terms of the difficulty rating, it's a three out of five. So it's a great one for if you've got a few sewing projects under your belt and you want to try something a little bit more complicated, like a full collar or a button placket. And I do find, like I mentioned, Closet Core's instructions to be really good. And the version I'm wearing today is the dress version. I have made the crop version too. Um, and yeah, I quite like all the different versions on this one. But yeah, this is the dress version. I made it in this really pretty cotton poplin fabric. I can't remember where I got this fabric, but I'm going to look it up after I finish filming and I'll pop it in the video description down below. It's a really lovely, um, pretty pop cotton poplin fabric with lots of different flowers on in really cute colours, I think. There's a sort of um, bright yellow and a sort of lilac and a hot pink. I think it's quite a nice, a ditzy floral print. I do like a ditzy floral. Yeah, and I really like the colours on this one. It just makes me quite happy when I put it on. And I made the version with the um, exposed button placket, so you can see the buttons. And I had a bit of fun picking out some bright yellow buttons to kind of, um, so you can just really see that detail of the placket. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. And you just really enjoy wearing this one, even though the weather's turning a little bit more autumnal, it does still make me feel a little bit summery. And in terms of sizing, um, I always size down on the Calais because I think it is designed to be a bit oversized. 
And I think, um, yeah, sizing down works quite well for me. Um, so I go for the size zero, and that's designed for bust 31 inches, waist 24 inches, and hips 33 inches. And I'm um, 32, 26, 36, so quite a bit bigger on the waist and hips. But there's loads of room in this one, even the size zero, I find there's plenty of room and it doesn't sort of feel tight on the hips. I'll stand up again so you can kind of see what the fit is like. So yeah, there's quite a lot of room um, even in that size for me. Um, I, the one adjustment I did make for this shirt dress version is I lengthened it by quite a bit. I think maybe two or three inches because I did make my first version of the shirt dress version before. And it came up really short, particularly because the Calais has this dipped hem. And so particularly at the sides, it came up really high. So for my first version, I don't ever really wear it without leggings underneath because it just feels a bit too short. But when I made this version, I wanted to make it so I could wear it as a dress, maybe with a pair of sandals when it's nice summery weather. So I made it a bit longer. And so I have got on with leggings today, which is more about the fact that it's a bit chilly this morning. But yeah, it's long enough, I think, to wear without leggings. I'll put a picture up so you can see. And I'm five foot six for reference, just to get an idea of kind of where it comes down to on me. Now I've lengthened it. But it's a nice comfy one to wear. It's nice and loose. I quite like a band collar because I sometimes find like the full collar can make me a little bit hot around the collar, as it were. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice comfy one to wear. It does make me feel quite happy. Um, this nice sort of summery sort of floral fabric. So that's why I'm wearing today. But now I'll move on to sharing with you and um, what I've been up to making wise during the summer. So the first garment I wanted to share with you is one that I finished towards the beginning of the summer holidays. And I think I talked a little bit about this pattern and the fabric and everything in some of my midweek chat videos before the summer holidays. But I don't think I ever shared the final garment, so I wanted to include it in this video so you could see how it turned out. And it's a blouse pattern that I made using a pattern from this magazine here, which is Five Mood magazine number 16. And it's the first ever Five Mood magazine I bought. I'd sort of admired their patterns for a while and then this issue came along and there are a couple of patterns in here I really like the look of so I thought I'd get it and give them a go and I've really enjoyed sewing them up actually and I just really like the Five Moon magazines anyway they have so many pretty pictures in they're quite fun just to have a leaf through for some sort of general inspiration on fabrics and styles and that sort of thing and the blouse I made is this one here it is the ermine blouse and it's a really pretty blouse pattern. It's quite a simple shaped blouse with a really couple of lovely details that I think makes it a little bit different. So I'll show you the line drawing. So it's quite a simple blouse with straight sleeves and quite a straight fit and this round neck which is finished with bias binding which gives it a really nice finish I think. And it's got a button placket at the front and then the really pretty detail on this blouse is a gathering. So at the front there's a sort of v-shaped gathering and at the back there's gathering too. I think they're such lovely details and give the blouse sort of a little bit of a romantic feel to it. And it's a really good size range on these patterns too in the Five Move magazine. They go from a UK 6 up to a UK 28 to 30. So yeah, a nice size range on there. And they're really fun to sew. I would mention before I talk more about my blouse, one thing about the Five Move magazines, which I mentioned before and was something new to me, is that if you buy the paper patterns, I don't think it's the same for the PDF. If you buy the actual paper magazine, all the patterns come without seam allowances added. So you have to add them yourself. And they explain quite clearly in the magazine um, how to do it. So it's quite a simple process, but it does add a bit more time to the whole um, sewing process. And I actually don't mind adding those seam allowances because I often find I do tend to sort of rush through projects a little bit. So I quite like it if things like that help me slow down a little bit. But I know some people really don't enjoy the process of adding seam allowances on, so I thought it was worth mentioning. But yeah, anyway, um, I decided to make the ermine blouse. This is my second version of it because I made it once before and I really enjoyed making it. And the first version I made, I made, went for quite a busy fabric, not the same as this, but kind of similar style, kind of ditzy floral. And I think because it was such a busy fabric, it kind of hid the details of the gathering a little bit so you couldn't quite see them. So I had in the back of my mind, I wanted to make another version where those lovely gathering details were a little bit more obvious. And then I saw some fabric I really liked, which came from Rainbow Fabrics. And um, I'll link their website down below. I'm not sure if this fabric's still in stock, but I'll link it if it is. Um, and I thought this fabric could really showcase all the details of the pattern. It's a viscose fabric, and here is the viscose fabric and my final blouse. So it's a really lovely white viscose fabric with this cute sort of stars and heart prints on. And it's lovely lightweight fabric. I guess it's maybe slightly sheer, and I quite like that because then you can see the seam lines here and you can really see the gathering detail here and again at the back. So yeah, the details are really showcased, I think, from this fabric. So this is my finished blouse. Um, I went for the size extra small to small version. The sizes sort of categories are grouped. 
and my measurements came out towards the top end of that category but when I looked at the finished garment measurements it looked like I'd fall comfortably inside it. Um, so yeah, this is my version here. I decided to go for plain white buttons down the front because I thought maybe, I did think about going for black buttons but I thought actually I quite wanted the print to stand out and the buttons to be a little bit more subtle. But yeah, it's really lovely. This has got a lovely drape to it so I think it works really well for a blouse. In terms of adjustments, the one main adjustment I made was um, the order in which I put on the button placket because my first version, um, I kind of just followed the instructions um, as they went and it turns out you add the button placket right at the end after, um, after you've hemmed the blouse and I found it a bit tricky to get the button placket and the length of the blouse to exactly sort of match up um, so I instead this time decided to add the button placket on before and kind of incorporate it into the bias binding and I kind of prefer that finish. And the other thing that I think I mentioned in my midweek sewing chat videos, or maybe my makes video for my first I mean blouse, is that I found the way they kind of um, add on interfacing to the button placket is that you kind of add it onto both placket pieces and then fold over. So you end up with four layers of interfacing on the placket. And I found with my first version, my placket ended up a little bit stiff, particularly with the drapey viscose fabric as a contrast to the rest of the blouse. So for this version, my second version, um, I just added on one strip of interfacing for each placket, so the each placket piece. So I've only got sort of two interfacing pieces overall here. So it's got the, the placket now is a little bit less stiff and a bit more fluid. So although it kind of has enough structure to hold the buttonholes, um, it actually makes it a little bit less sort of sticky out and sort of, um, yeah, stiff, the button placket. So I'm glad I made that adjustment too. So I hope that makes sense. But this is my blouse. I'll pop a pic picture of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. It's really comfy to wear and I think it's really pretty in this fabric. So yeah, that is my first make. <laughs> oh, and I also wanted to mention, um, in case you're new to sewing five mood patterns, what I found a really useful thing is that um, in the actual magazine itself, the instructions are quite brief and they're mainly picture based. But if you go on the five mood website and create an account, you then have access to sort of more detailed written instructions, which hold your hand a bit more through the sewing process. So I did that and downloaded the full instructions for the Amin blouse and I find them found them really helpful. So I definitely recommend going on the website and creating an account and then downloading the full written instructions if you're going to try a five move pattern. So the next make I've got to share is a quite a summary one and it's a hack of a really popular pattern which is this one here, the Wilder Gown Pattern by Friday Pattern Co. So it's a real indie classic pattern this one. I know I've seen loads of versions of this one since it came out a couple of years ago. And it's quite a loose, flowy dress pattern, which you can also make as a shirt. You can add on um, one tier or two tiers to it. It's got a raglan sleeve, which comes down to sort of a three quarter length, I guess. And the real feature on this pattern that makes it a bit different is the neckline. You kind of sew it as quite a large neckline. And then you fold it over to make a channel and then gather it in with this tie to create quite a pretty feature. And I've made one version so far of this pattern. I made it last winter. I kind of held off buying this pattern for quite a while because I wasn't sure if it suited would suit me. But I decided to give it a go last winter. I made a version that was a sort of baby doll style version. This one here, I made it. Um, I made the sleeves full length for winter with one tier and fairly short in a black viscose fabric with flowers on. And I haven't worn that version that much to be honest because I wasn't sure when I made it if it suited me. It's a bit oversized. I wasn't really sure if it was my style. I think I need to get it out again this winter and give it another go and see how I feel. But after I made that version, I sort of put this pattern away and then hadn't got any other plans to get it back out again until I saw um, a really um, cool hack on Instagram, which was done by Alice, who is the Polka Dot Palace. And I'll link her Instagram account down below. And what she did in her hack was um, basically to remove the sleeves because it's this raglan sleeve and turn it into a um, sort of um, halter neck style sleeveless um, wilder gown. And I thought it looked really pretty. She made a top version and she also made a dress version. And I thought actually I quite, might quite like that better because I felt there was quite a lot of fabric at the top with the gathering once you added the sleeves on. So I thought it might actually suit me better as a pattern just to make the halter neck where you only have the fabric for the front and back bodice and not the sleeves too. And I thought it would just be quite fun to give it a go. And Alice posted a video um, to her Instagram showing how to do this hack. And it was quite straightforward. I'll try and link that video down below too. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun and give that a try. I thought I'd also mention the size range on the Wild Gun is really good. Um, I've got the pay pattern, which goes up to 4X. But actually, if you go online and get the PDF pattern, you can then get it up to 7XL, which takes you up to a bust of 60 inches. And when I make this pattern, I always go for the smallest size because I know this one is designed to be very loose and flowy and oversized. I think my bust is the smallest size, which is extra small. 
My waist and hips put me at a size small, but I've never bothered grading out. And the versions I've made definitely, they do come up with loads of room. So I think it's one you can definitely size down a bit if you don't want it really, really oversized. But what I decided to do was I decided to give this um, sort of sleeveless hack a go. And I decided to use some twirl fabric to start with because I wasn't sure again if it would suit me. I didn't want to waste my nice fabric, which I kind of had in mind. So I'll show you my twirl first. So here it is. And I use this fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. Um, it was gifted to me actually by them. And um, it's really pretty and we've got a really cute print on. And it's got this black base and these sort of pink stars and um, hearts on it. But I wasn't, it wasn't my favourite fabric and it arrived just because the texture, it's kind of got a bit of a viscose crepe type texture to it. And that's not my favourite texture. It's not my favourite thing that I like to wear. So I thought it'd be great for a twirl. So I decided to use it for my wild gown um, sleeveless hack, my twirl version. So here it is, as you can see, it's quite simple. What you kind of do is you basically trace out the main front and back bodice piece and just um, sew them together as you would the wild gown normally. But instead of attaching on the sleeves, you kind of just turn them under and then sort of stitch down around the edge here. So you can see there, you turn it under twice and stitch it down. So it gives quite a nice little simple finish and it came together really simply. And for this version, I did the hack that Alice did for sort of a baby doll style summer dress, which is basically I extended the sort of plain shirt version down to turn it into a dress. So I kind of just brought the side seams out slightly to make sure there's plenty of room for my hips and just turned it into quite a simple, yeah, baby doll style dress. So it's got a cute little detail at the front with this little tie. And just quite a nice, loose, breezy summer dress. So yeah, this is my 12 version and I tried it on and I quite liked it. So I thought I'd give it a go with my proper fabric. I haven't actually finished this version. I haven't hemmed it because I don't think it's one I'll probably wear just because I don't love the feel of the fabric for me. But yeah, that's my 12 version. And I'll show you my proper version now. So I didn't make any adjustments to my final version. And here is my final version. And this is another fabric from Rainbow Fabrics, actually. But this one is more of a viscose chalet, which is more um, softer and smoother and a fabric I really love to wear. And it has a bit, I think it's maybe got a little bit more um, movement to it than the first fabric too, which is a little bit more crispy. So I thought it would look really nice as a sort of breezy summer dress. But it's quite hard to see because it kind of just hangs on the hanger all down. But here again, I've got this sort of sleeveless version with a turned under edge. I've got a little tie that kind of gathers. And it's a really lovely, breezy, lightweight summer dress. I've kind of made it just above the knee length. So yeah, it's really cute and comfy to wear. And actually, I made this right at the end of the summer. So I haven't had much of a chance to wear it. But I think I'll definitely get this one out um, next year. We're hoping to go away somewhere hot next year on summer holidays, fingers crossed. And I think it'll be a great sort of beach cover up too, just to pop on over a bikini. But I think it would also look quite cute dressed up with a pair of sandals for going out in the evening too. But I put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I really enjoyed making this hat oh, and it came together really quickly. So I definitely recommend giving it a go. As I mentioned, I'll link all of the details on Alice's um, Instagram page but, 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 uh, underneath. <laughs> just lost my words there a moment. I really like the idea actually of trying out the top version of this hack too. I definitely think it um, makes the wild gown pattern work better for me when I make it this way. So although I am going to give my wintry version more of a go this winter too and I'll let you know how I get on with that one. But yeah, my first dress I've got to show in this video, this cute little sort of baby doll wild gown hack. So my next garment I've got to share with you is another dress and it's another hack. And this one is a hack of one of my favourite patterns to hack, especially for sort of a summery style dress. And you may know what that pattern is already if you've watched some of my previous videos. You may have an idea what pattern that is. Or you may have seen this dress pop up on Instagram already because I've already shared it on there. And it's one I'm really pleased with actually. And the pattern that I hacked is this one here. It is the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. It's a really nice woven top cami that's got quite a simple boxy straight shape to it. So I think it lends itself really well to hacking. And it's got this lovely um, deep V at the front and the back and spaghetti straps. And it comes together really nice. The cami top itself, I think, is great and such a sort of summer staple. But yeah, it's really fun to hack too. It's really easy to crop it off and turn it into a sort of dress with a gathered skirt. I think I've also seen versions where it's been turned into more of a slip dress too without the gathered skirt, just kind of brought out a little bit. And that looks great as well. And it's got a really good size range on this pattern too. And I've got the size US 0 to 18 version, but there's also a US 14 to 30 version, I think it is, which takes you up to a um, bust of 57 and a half inches. And that 14 to 30 size range has a couple of differences. The straps are slightly wider and there's also bust starts added. This version doesn't have any bust starts. It's just really, really simple. Yeah, I really enjoy hacking this pattern. And when the weather is really, really hot this summer, I thought to myself, I'd love a really floaty 
loose sort of baby doll style Ogden cami in a really lightweight viscose chalet type fabric. I thought that'd be perfect for keeping me cool. And then I was offered the chance to um, sew up one of Minerva's new viscose chalet fabrics from their new exclusive range. You may have seen um, earlier this summer they launched a whole range of new um, viscose chalet prints and they're really gorgeous prints actually. Um, I'll link the website down below in case you fancy having a browse. There are so many very pretty prints to choose from. So I was very kindly gifted up um, some of their, one of their prints to sew up um, in exchange for a post on their website, which I'll link down below in case you fancy having a read, where I talk all about the fabric I've sewn up and also this garment, this Ogden Cami hack. But I'll share it with you now and share some of the details. You'll see the print, it's really funky, I think. So yeah, this is my Ogden Cami hack dress in this lovely viscose chalet. And it's really nice quality viscose chalet. It's, it's so soft and drapey, but it's also nice and opaque too. It was really nice to sew with, actually it gathered really beautifully. So yeah, it's really nice to wear too. It's so lovely and soft against your skin. So yeah, this is my Ogden Cami hack and this really funky fabric, I think. I don't often go for this sort of tealy colour to it, but I just love this sort of leopard print on this kind of black and teal and bright green. I thought it was a bit different and a bit of a twist on a classic leopard print and I thought it'd be really fun for a summery dress. So for my dress hack version of the Ogden Cami here, um, I went for the size zero on the pattern, um, which is designed for a chest 32, waist 26 and hips 34. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm 32, 26, 36, but the hips measurement wasn't critical because I cropped off the cami pattern. And as you can see, I cropped it off here. I kind of wanted it somewhere just below empire line, but above my natural waist to give a baby doll style feel. I think I went for maybe a couple of centimetres above the length and shorten line on the pattern pieces. And then I basically, instead of cutting out a facing for the inside, what I do when I'm making my sort of dress style versions of the Ogden Cami is I cut two fronts and two backs and then I make a full lining of the bodice and just sort of attach the gathered skirt onto the outside piece and then slip stitch the, un the inside lining pieces under to give quite a neat finish on the inside. I'll show you how that looks. So you can see here, the dress is fully lined on the bodice on the inside, which I think gives a really nice finish. And in terms of adjustments I made um, to the pattern, the cami pattern at the top here, I widened the shoulder straps slightly because the shoulder straps on the pattern are designed to be quite narrow spaghetti straps. And I wanted to make sure I had a bit more bra strap coverage because I might want to wear a bra underneath this one. So I just widened them wide enough to cover my bra straps. And then I also brought the back of the pattern up because the Ogden cami has quite a deep V at the back. And I thought by bringing it up, it'll definitely cover the back of my bra too. And I also always try to add in a little something at the back of the, of the dress, just so I know which way around to put it. Sometimes with the Ogden Cami, I find it's really hard to figure out which way is the front and the back, particularly since I've raised the back up, because you usually can tell because the back comes down a bit more deep at the back. So what I did was I just added a little bit of ribbon here, which I thought tied in quite nicely with the sort of black um, in the fabric. So yeah, just a little bit of ribbon, I kind of zigzagged around the edge. So it's quite nice and soft and there aren't any scratchy bits there to wear. And then I added on a gathered skirt and I kept it quite short because I wanted it to be quite breezy and lightweight and sort of swishy for summer. I also did add on pockets. Yeah, there's pockets here, um, which I probably wouldn't put anything too heavy in, but I thought they'd be quite useful just, you know, if I had to dash downstairs after my children want to pop my phone in and that sort of thing. So it sewed up really nicely. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like I said, this fabric was really lovely to sew with and it is so lovely and soft. Um, and I'll put a couple of pictures so you can see what it looks like on. So it's another one I did get to wear actually because we had a late sort of a bit of heat towards the end of the summer and it was really nice and cool and um, cooling to wear in the hot weather. But I think actually it would look quite nice with a black top underneath maybe and um, moving into autumn too. So I'm hoping I might be able to still get a bit of wear out of this one this year as we get some cooler weather. But yeah, I will link the um, post on the Minerva website down below in case you want to read a bit more about this dress or see a few more pictures. Um, yeah, I really would def definitely recommend the um, exclusive viscose chalet fabrics. They are really nice quality. And yeah, I just think this print is really, really fun. So yeah, that's my next make this summer. So the next garment I've got to share with you that I made this summer is a pair of shorts. And this is the second pair of shorts I've made using this particular pattern. I made one version earlier than in the summer and I got loads of wear out of them. I really enjoy wearing them. So I wanted to make another pair. So I definitely got another pair in my wardrobe for next summer. I found them particularly practical on holiday just to pull on because they're a pair of elasticated waist shorts. They're very comfy to wear and easy to pop on and off like on the beach and that sort of thing. And I actually made these shorts using a free pattern for pyjama bottoms, which is the Walk the Plank Pyjama Bottoms by Patterns for Pirates. 
I'll put a picture up of the um, pattern because I haven't got it printed out because I just downloaded it in PDF. It's a really simple pattern that I've used for my children to make pyjama bottoms for. And I wanted to make a pair of shorts and I thought I could just use that pattern and adapt it slightly to turn into a pair of daytime shorts rather than buying a new shorts pattern. I thought it would be a bit of fun. So yeah, that's the pattern. It's a basic, simple pyjama bottoms pattern for woven fabrics. It's got a really good um, range to it. Um, the hip measurement goes from a 33 inches up to a 58 inches. And it's a unisex pattern too. And it's really easy to download. I'll link it down below. You can download it for free. It comes with a couple of different waist tights. It's like a higher rise and a lower rise. And then a few different lengths, like a shorty shorts version a, and a sort of knee length shorts version, a full length shorts and um, full length pajama bottoms version too. And it's a really simple pattern. And it's quite nice and straightforward and quick to sew too, because each of the legs you cut and the full leg um, is one pattern piece. And there's just a side seam down the inside seam. There's no outside seam. Just the whole leg is one pattern piece. So it comes together really nicely and I thought it'd be fun to try and have a go of turning that pattern into a pair of shorts for the daytime. So here are these shorts I made this summer. I'm really happy with how I, they turned out. I think they're really cute. So I basically um, used the Patterns for Pirates Walk the Plank Pajama Bottoms pattern. I think I sized up slightly on my hip measurement because I wanted it to be a bit of room in the shorts and for them to be a little bit swishy in this lovely viscose fabric I use, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then basically what I did um, for this version to turn them into sort of daytime shorts is I decided to add a little paper bag waist, which I thought would be really cute. So I basically extended the waistline up. I went with a higher rise waistline option, then extended up to give plenty of room to be able to fold down and add the paper bag. And actually this is the second pair I've made of these and I made both of the paper bag. But the first version, I was quite limited on fabric, so it's quite a teeny little paper bag. And this one I decided to make a slightly larger paper bag, you can see here. I think it's maybe two and a half or three centimetres high, the paper bag. And I hadn't done a paper bag before I made my first version of these shorts, but actually I found it really simple to do, more simple than I expected. You basically need to kind of fold over the fabric and sew as if you're making a really big elastic channel. And then you need to add another line of stitching here, just to sort of create the paper bag. And then you thread the elastic through just the bottom layer and then it sort of cinches in and gets a little cute paper bag feature at the top. So yeah, these are my paper bag waist shorts. In terms of the length, um, I think I went for somewhere between the shorty shorts and the knee length shorts version because I didn't want them to be really, really short. I think I cut them a little bit longer than this and then sort of turned up to the length I wanted because I had a bit more fabric to play with this time around than for my first version. One thing I wish I'd done actually was add a label at the back because I do find it quite hard to figure out which way around they go. I have to kind of feel around for where the little crotch seam is because that obviously sits slightly towards the front to give them more room around the back. But yeah, these are my shorts and I think they're really cute and I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of them, particularly in the warm weather next year. And I made them in this really pretty Dashwood Studio viscose print. It's so lovely and drapey and swishy. I think it's perfect for a pair of lightweight summer shorts. And um, it's got really pretty colours to it. The background is almost like a really deep purple colour. And it's got these really pretty pinks and blues and reds. I think they're really nice together, so. Yeah, I had my eye on this fabric for a while and I thought it'd make a really cute pair of shorts and work really well with maybe just a plain black vest top or that sort of thing. I think it'll go with quite a lot of different colours I can pick out. So these are my shorts and the fabric came from Eliza Mac Fabrics and I'll link it down below if it's still in stock. She has some really lovely fabrics on her website, so definitely worth a little browse of her website. They're based in Wales and yeah, they have a really nice little collection of all different types of fabrics, um, knits and wovens and all sorts, so... Yeah, it was a lot of fun putting these shorts together and they were quite a nice simple sew and they're just really comfy to wear because the waist's fully elasticated. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting them out again next summer. I'm a bit sad to put them away now really now the weather's getting a bit darker and drearier outside. Oh, and I'll put a picture up of me wearing them so you can see what they look like on. They're just really comfy to wear um, and yeah, just a really easy breezy pair of shorts. So the next make I've got to share with you is actually the top that I'm wearing in this picture with my new shorts. And this top is a new pattern to me that I got this summer. And it's this pattern here. It is the Zoe Tank and Dress Pattern by True Bias. And I really love True Bias patterns. Obviously, in, early in the video, I was talking about the Ogden Cami and how much I like that one. And so when I saw True Bias had a new pattern out, well, I'm always interested in what they've got as their new pattern. And I really like the look of this one. This is a um, pattern that's designed for stretch fabrics. It's a knit top. And you can either make it as a sort of little cropped vest top here or a longer vest top that kind of falls, I guess, around your hip level. Or you can make it into a full length dress here, which I've seen some really pretty versions of on Instagram too. And it comes in a really good size range, this pattern. And um, there's a US 0 to 18 version and then a US 
um, 14 to 32 version, which takes you up to a bust of 59 and a half inches. See, I really like the look of this pattern when it came out, and I haven't really got too many vest top patterns, particularly not sort of more strappy style vest top pattern like this. So yeah, I like the look of that and I thought it might be quite a nice staple pattern for my wardrobe. But I wasn't entirely sure about it just because I'm not always a big fan of a V-neckline. It's just not a style I like to wear so much. But then I saw after Zoe Tank came out, True Bias have released on their website some free add-ons to this pattern to give you some different variations to the neckline. Um, so the three variations included were a sort of scoop neckline and a square neckline and I think a slightly higher neckline too. And so that made the pattern more appealing to me because I thought actually I'd have a lot of fun trying out those different necklines. I like the look of a bit better than the V-neckline. So I decided to buy the pattern and download the free add-ons too. And I'll link the um, page on the True Bias website down below that has those free neckline add-ons on. You can go on there and download the pattern files and it's really easy to adjust the pattern pieces for those necklines. So what I decided to do was I decided to uh, make a wearable twirl of this pattern just to test it out. Um, just because at that time in the summer, I was kind of lacking a bit of sojo and I wasn't feeling really inspired to choose a new fabric for this top. So I thought I'd just find a remnant piece in my fabric stash because I've got quite a few jersey off cuts. And I thought I'd just give it a go using that and then I could just see how I got on and then see if I was then inspired to go on and make another version in a new fabric. And the great thing is, oh, I chose to use, make this crop top version here just to sort of test out the fit. And I thought it would be quite good maybe for layering underneath things. Um, and also I thought the crop top would be good because it wouldn't take too much fabric. So I'd be able to find definitely a jersey remnant I had that would have enough fabric to make that version. See, so yeah, I decided to give it a go and I went with the um, size zero, which is like with the Ogden Cami based on it works well for my chest and waist measurements, which are chest 32 and waist 26. And again, the hip measurement is 34 for the size zero, but it wasn't relevant for the crop top pattern because it doesn't come down towards the hips. But I think it is quite a close fitting top. So at some point, if I do make this version in the future, I probably would grade out the hips because I wouldn't, wouldn't want it too tight there because the top already has negative ease built in. So yeah, I decided to make a wearable twirl using this purple cotton jersey fabric that I'd originally used to make a Freya dress with a frill um, around the neckline. I'll see if I can find it and put a picture up of that one. I made that quite a while ago now, and I really like it actually, but purple isn't always a colour I go for. So I thought a wearable 12 version would be good and I can just wear it around the house to chill out in if it's hot weather and that sort of thing. It might not be one I wore out so much. So yeah, here is my little um, cropped version of the Zoe tank with the scoop neckline. I decided to go with the scoop neckline because I thought that's a neckline I do quite like to wear on other tops. And yeah, it came together really nicely actually. And I really, really like the finish of the um, the sort of straps and how it goes over the sort of um, yeah the straps on the shoulder and round the armholes. I think it comes together really nicely, and the true bias instructions really yeah make it really simple and easy to follow. Um, yeah, so that's my little Zoe crop top. It was really nice, simple sew, and I definitely think I'd like to try this pattern again. And I do like the idea of maybe having a go of maybe the square neckline and the higher neckline too. And actually, when I finished this top, I realised it went really well with my little um, short. So. Actually, um, I might end up wearing this one out with these shorts, and which I hadn't expected to. But yeah, it's a really comfy top. It does come up quite tight on me. I'll put a picture up again so you can see. It's definitely close fitting. So if you wanted it to be slightly looser, you might want to size up a little bit. Um, it definitely has some negative ease built into this one. But it came together really nicely, as always, with True Bias patterns. Um, and yeah, I think it's quite a cute one. I'm not sure whether I can see myself making the dress version so much. I'm not sure that'll be so me. Although maybe if I cropped off to sort of a... Uh, just above the knee length it might I might feel more comfortable in it but I can definitely see myself making some versions of these I've got some old ready to wear vest tops they're definitely going to wear out at some point and I really like the idea of this pattern as a great replacement for them so yeah that's my final make the Zoe um, Tank and Dress by True Bars I'll put a picture up again there in case I don't think I had much time to show it there before I held the pattern up again and I know it's nice to see a picture for a while just to see how the fit is and everything so yeah that is my Zoe Tank and I'm really pleased I decided to get that pattern and thank you True Bias for releasing those neckline extensions. It definitely, yeah, made it all the difference for me. <laughs> so that is everything I've got to share in this video, all of my makes for this summer. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about them. And if you have, I'd love it if you give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, thank you very much for tuning in. I would love it if you consider subscribing. And then also if you press the bell icon, it means you'll be notified when I bring my future videos out. So yeah, it's really nice to be back on YouTube with a couple of new videos. And I've got some more planned now. Um, I've got some sewing plans for autumn. I'm looking forward to sharing and some new fabrics on the way soon. So I'll be back for another video soon. In the meantime, I hope you have a great day. And thanks again for watching. Bye.